Okay, thank you very much, and um, good afternoon, I think, now, everybody. I just want to give a shout-out to the live streamers we have watching us who aren't present in the room. Um, we've had about 30 in, in, at one time from Brazil, Korea, um, and Texas, <laughs> um, and the UK, and California. So uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody. Um, as Ed said, I'm, a, I'm a, a new recruit at Crossref. I think I have the longest job title, Director of Member and Community Outreach, uh, which doesn't fit on our new PowerPoint templates, but um, I've discovered that I am Director of M & Co, which is kind of cute, so I'm happy with that. Um, first of all, we'd like to introduce you to um, the Member and Community Outreach team, um, sometimes talk, called the COM team for community outreach, membership, and marketing. And these are the people who have brought things together um, for everybody today and yesterday. Um, you may know Susan and Anne on the right-hand side there. They're responsible for welcoming new members and answering queries for all of our members. Um, April, Anna, and Rosa are uh, our uh, marketing gurus. Um, April's a new recruit. Uh, specifically responsible for uh, content and um, educational content. So she'll be creating lots of great resources, writing blog posts, and, and probably interviewing some of you at some point. <laughs> um, and we're very lucky, as, as Ed mentioned, to have Rachel moving across from the product team to join us. She's going to head up our international outreach efforts. Um, so, yeah, welcome, Rachel. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about um, our, our membership. This is a, a larger number than everybody else is talking about, but this includes the, all of the organizations that have um, an account with Crossref. So these are libraries, these are um, technical service providers, and this is the number of organizations that Crossref and the comm team are uh, responsible for servicing. Um, which is, yeah, 7,563 is quite a, quite a large number. And, as has been mentioned, that number is growing uh, every year. So this, this is a chart showing the number of new um, organizations joining and participating in Crossref every year since we started. So we started in 2000 with 54 uh, member organizations. Um, and the last couple of years, you can see, in 2014, there were 1,100 and 72 organizations joining, and we've already surpassed that. We're not even at the end of, of 2015 yet. Um, and that's obviously more than 100 a month, so we clearly need to, need to have a, a plan for, uh, for managing uh, all of those organizations. And where are they coming from? This chart shows we couldn't fit it all on a pie chart. There are many, many different um, uh, countries represented now um, in the, the Crossref community, um, under other, that sort of top left light grey, there's 235 in, from other countries. That includes Poland, Ukraine, um, many countries in Latin America, as, uh, as Juan was uh, talking about earlier. And this is just actually the, um, the top uh, few. So South Korea, Brazil, Turkey, actually still getting more from the United States and the United Kingdom and Russia. Um, and you can see some of our, I guess, growth uh, growth markets there. Um, another chart now to just show um, what kinds of organizations are joining. They're pretty much all in the small uh, fee category. Um, so, you know, we've had uh, one new publisher join in a sort of a mid-range $15,000 annual fee. Um, but really, they're, in the, uh, they're, they're from countries where we waive the fee, so really developing countries, or in the very, very smallest fee categories of $275 a year. Um, so clearly proving the point that a lot of people have mentioned that all of our new members really are very small publishers, scholar publishers, individual academics, um, setting up uh, journals. Uh, so I also wanted to um, give or understand really myself a, a snapshot of how... Uh, Crossref is perceived by um, our community, um, and this, uh, this is our first um, NPS survey, so the net promoter score that some of you might be familiar with. Um, we did our first one a few weeks ago, and our net promoter score is 52, which um, doesn't mean much unless you compare it um, either with other, other organizations, um, but as with many things, there are... Um, 
you know, it's lot, lots of these surveys, there, aren't, there isn't really a category for scholarly publishing on the technology side and not-for-profit. <laughs> so what's more interesting, I think, is next year to see whether this is going to go up, um, which, of course, we aim, we aim to achieve. And um, uh, I also want to break out this score, um, which I plan to do after the event, um, into uh, our smaller publishers and our larger publishers and see how the, how the, how the number changes. Just to explain... The uh, question people are asked is uh, uh, to rank us on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, how likely are you to recommend uh, Crossref to a colleague? And 63% uh, said uh, scored us either 9 or 10, which is pretty decent. 11% uh, were 6 or, or under. And um, I just want to give you a flavor. We already had some sort of home truths from uh, Martin Eve yesterday. Um, and uh, I'm afraid I've got some more. <laughs> the, um, uh, the, the comments are pretty much uh, what, what you would expect. Nothing truly, uh, truly um, uh, outstanding. Um, but, you know, our website is not terribly user-friendly. Um, uh, small publishers don't really have uh, necessarily the technical knowledge to work with us. Um, depositing and submitting XML data is kind of difficult. Um, so we have, we have a lot of challenges to overcome to overcome all of these. So this is a, a snapshot of some of the detractor comments from our survey. Um, promoters, though, which is the vast number, of course, um, huge fans of Crossref. Um, I'm, you know, makes our job quite a bit easier that, that so many people are, are very, um, are big promoters of Crossref, actually. Um, comments particularly around working with our teams, um, the, the level of service and customer service that people are getting, they're very pleased with. Um, they, they appreciate us trying to be straightforward um, and, uh, and kind of do a good job, this, the shared in infrastructure. A lot of comments about, um, well, we have to get DOIs, so of course we love Crossref. So that's sort of in there as well. Um, so we clearly have a, a, a list of tasks to achieve for next year. <laughs> and there's obviously more than 10, but I just wanted to highlight a few. Um, we do need clearer messages, which uh, some of the branding has started to address. Um, we are talking about our services grouped under either metadata in or metadata out now. Um, and, uh, and we're also looking at sort of audience profiles and really figuring out what key benefits are to different types of organizations. So you'll see a lot more of these um, hopefully clearer communications coming out over the next uh, months and next year. Um, we want to focus on um, a simpler and guided approach to all of our processes, whether that's new members signing up or any kind of process to interact with Crossref guided and contextual help um, in context as people are, are um, performing those actions. That's the key um, goal for us. And a happy user experience. A lot of people have talked about our disparate um, interfaces. Ed already mentioned that um, in Jennifer's team there'll be a new um, uh, user experience uh, researcher joining, um, which, which um, will be a great help, and he'll have a, a great first few months figuring out what the priorities will be, I think. And we will start with... Um, a new crossref.org website. Uh, we've started that, the, the, the preliminary stages for that process. We have, a, we have an agency on board who are particularly good with information architecture, and they have um, already started that process. They've been interviewing some uh, members, actually really sm focusing on smaller publishers and uh, newer members um, and you know, our, our wider community. Um, and we should be at least getting a new sort of um, site map and, uh, and uh, drawings in very early on in the new year. So we should be rolling out in Q1 a new crossref.org, um, which will make things a lot easier for everybody. And um, we'll be very proud to show it off, I think. Um, we're going to introduce a, a real onboarding program to welcome new members and also to check in with members. Um, we have a few that join and then maybe don't deposit, and we need to go back to them and, and figure out if they're having problems, why they're having problems. Um, so we have a, we'll, we'll have a drive to really um, help them on board. Um, and also, uh, when, they, when they do have the kind of foundational um, um, level of service right with the DOI assignment and depositing, then 
uh, introduce uh, some of our other services and make sure that they're aware of, of how they can take advantage of Crossmark and, and, and other initiatives. Um, really, this is kind of, uh, I've mentioned this, we need to show some love to our small publishers. I've made that, made that clear and that's been mentioned a few times. Um, and we want to try and start making some non-English materials to help our, to help our uh, members from you know, Brazil and South Korea and the countries I already mentioned. Um, and, and we're going to start an educational program that's really going to be um, spearheaded by Patricia Feeney, who many of you will know, heads our support um, group. And uh, a lot of our resources then that created out of that will be focused around uh, actually kind of educating about, you know, editorial practice, um, but really some of the, the basics, what we call kind of evergreen content, like what's the point of a DOI, <laughs> um, and making sure that we can bust some of those myths, to use Jeffrey Builder's delightful phrase. <laughs> So um, we will then um, have all of our activities, really, like our webinars and on our events around these kind of key themes rather than around specific products or types of metadata that we accept. We want to work more strategically with our sponsoring affiliates. Uh, these are organizations uh, that number about 25 at the moment all around the world, and they represent a lot of uh, smaller publishers, several hundred um, in total. And these are, these are the organizations who can help um, uh, sort of cascade these educational programs in their regions or for their sort of member types. Um, the Public Knowledge Project and, and WAN uh, is an example of one of our sponsoring affiliates um, and, and clearly as he showed um, thousands of people using, using the uh, PKP uh, service and the Crossref plugin so um, we want to start doing some co-outreach uh, with organizations like PKP. And uh, as mentioned, Rachel will be talking with a broader uh, community, um, both internationally, but we also have an effort to talk to, um, uh, you know, more than just our, our current members, so uh, arms of government, um, funders, uh, higher education institutions, and uh, the research community as well, and the developer community, actually. Um, we will be looking to start an ambassador program, and Rachel will be kicking that off in the new year. So that's my sort of update on our membership and our plans for next year. Um, I want to now just um, uh, say something a little bit about our new branding. Um, it is not just a pretty face, um, although it is very beautiful, I think. <laughs> um, there have been, yeah, lots of compliments, but it isn't just a makeover we've, we've done here. Um, it's really the beginning of a comprehensive new approach uh, for Crossref, um, a new communications approach um, and an outreach approach um, to clear up some of the confusion and really make explicit what we do, for whom, and why, in fact. Um, so, by the way, those are angle brackets, metadata in, metadata out. So anyone familiar with metadata will, will be familiar with those angle brackets. Um, and that's what makes the zigzag there, FYI, in case you were wondering. So, um, yeah, without, uh, you know, launching straight into the fun stuff, I just wanted to talk a little bit about why we wanted to rebrand. I mean, I think some of the um, challenges have, uh, you know, I've already kind of covered those, but Ed also mentioned there has been a lot of confusion about the parentage of our products and our brands. So we would get people asking us, you know, what is anyone from Fundref, you know, do they have a stand as well? Um, clearly, that's a Crossref initiative, <laughs> Crossref owned. So we need to really clear that up, and uh, visual identity can do that, but also language can help do that. Um, and our naming strategy, you know, we've had, um, uh, it's really been our own fault. We've been so excited about some of the new uh, initiatives uh, uh, coming out of Crossref that um, we got stuck into a kind of like um, system of calling things cross something or something ref. Um, and one of the things we're changing is actually making the, the R lowercase in the middle of the name Crossref, which you may have seen sometimes, and I think we'll be the first people who have to try and break that habit. We'll see how we do. Um, but that's really just to show we, we don't want the cross and the ref to, to, to needlessly divide again. Um, there has been a little disconnect about what we do and what people think we do, um, as explained, like what a DOI is for, and you just come to Crossref because you need a DOI or to buy a DOI. No. Um, and uh, I think it goes without saying the visual identity was a little bit out of date, to say the least. Um, so we actually talked to um, a lot of people 
not just our members, but researchers, funders, um, some, you know, fairly opinionated people whose name I'm, I'm not going to mention, but you will all know. Um, and they helped us to uh, kind of realize some things perhaps we already knew, but also to really focus on what our key messages should be. Um, actually, the full story of the logo is on the blog. The blog is now, there is no, no more cross tech anymore, I'm afraid. Sorry, Jeffrey. It's now blog.crossref.org. So that's every, all the content should, have, should, should be um, still accessible. Um, and that, uh, that blog post from last week, the logo has landed, that gives a lot more background about why, we, uh, why we've rebranded. Um, some of that audience research um, is quite interesting. A lot of people talked about how Crossref has been um, invisible in the past, but, but that there's a need for us to, to, to be more uh, prominent and, and talk more about what we're trying to do. Um, that our neutrality is useful for interacting with um, other parties. Obviously, we're a publisher, um, trade association by governance, um, but clearly our community is much wider and people are, really, people are really asking for us to continue to interact with those other parties. And we're missing opportunities to do more with those groups. Um, a lot of technical admiration and uh, for our innovation, like there's, there's things that can only really happen through Crossref. I can say that because I'm new and I'm not touting my own <laughs> work. Um, and here are some of the um, descriptions people used um, when we did this brand and audience research. Um, those on the left are pretty much all about our um, approach and structure, probably. The ones in the middle are, are very much about our, um, you know, the work that we do, um, that we're pretty practical, really kind of try to make things happen, um, but no, not in a no-nonsense kind of way. And on the right, you know, people find us helpful and uh, friendly and approachable, which is all good. Um, I haven't got a slide of the negatives, but I think there's been enough of them. So, <laughs> so um, before I just, I have a, a video actually with music, so hopefully the volume will be up. Um, I just wanted to go through some little practical things. Um, I mentioned that Crossref will now have a lowercase r in the middle. Um, we need to get that right ourselves first, I noticed from some of the morning slides. Um, and Crosstech is now blog.crossref.org. That's a, a good thing to know. Ed already mentioned that Fundref, um, that's actually the only one of our services we're changing right now um, in terms of name. Um, so uh, welcome funding data, a simple term, and the Fundref registry will now be the open funder registry. Um, so Crosscheck and Crossmark names remain for now. Um, those will be separate projects next year um, to think about how we can uh, rename those. So it's a very um, soft launch um, you could say, um, and we will be starting to communicate from next week when we've recovered from this uh, event, <laughs> and um, you should all get communications from us with, um, you know, logos and instructions on how to use how to use them, um, and yeah, just sort of further details. So that should be coming next week. And there's a, um, a content delivery network. Um, at um, assets.crossref.org, which Joe set up for me, thank you. I'd never heard of a CDN before I spoke to Joe. Um, so assets.crossref.org will give you snippets of, of, of code to um, reference our, our logos, so please don't copy them. Um, and we can be sure that everyone's using the right ones. So I want to just launch the new logo. And the new
Okay, thank you very much.